of how we read in GPS data um, from, actually I should, we should show yeah. this, uh, our unit here, our Atlas dev kit, because what we have right here is the Xsense MTI 710G, which is a model of IMU that we've been using for a good six or seven months now. Um, we support other IMUs as well, and this is the IMU we have on our dev kit. So this IMU has a GPS antenna and then ultimately feeds out to a USB that plugs into our embedded and or um, laptop devices that are running our stack, or any device that's running our stack for that matter, because it's generally hardware agnostic. Um, because it's a USB device, we essentially are reading data from it as a serial device. And one thing that makes it a lot easier when we're doing development um, is creating a symbolic link for the XSense so that no matter how many USB devices you have plugged in, um, as soon as you plug in the XSense IMU, it gets enumerated as a symbolic link of um, slash dev slash XSense if we're running on a Linux system. And it's important to do this so that it makes your programming easy and predictable and you don't have to worry about conflicts with other devices. Um, we have these pound defines in code here, which kind of mimic what I was saying about the um, symbolic link. However, these pound defines could also be broken out into, say, a JSON config. If you had multiple IMUs, we could have you know, multiple symbolic links. Um, it, but the concept, I think, remains the same. And then we have our baud rate defined here, um, which is um, pretty standard for this IMU and uh, type of device. Then what we're doing is opening a file descriptor um, object based on the port that we defined here from our symbolic link. And from that file descriptor, we're basically going to read from the serial port into a buffer of bytes. Um, and we're going to be releasing code in the next couple of weeks that's uh, on our open source repository that kind of goes, o goes over the byte level specifics of how you're reading in data from the XSense uh, IMU. And we read at a rate of 100 hertz. That's our sample rate. Um, this is not set in our state machine in the IMU drivers, but is rather set in the configuration process of the IMU, which might be a little different if you're used to other types of digital or analog IMUs for that matter, or sensors in general. Um, given that, we'll also be releasing the configuration code in the next couple of weeks, because um, it goes into a lot of similarly byte level specifics that we don't really need to get into for the time being. Um, then we, ultimately, after we decode the data, we rather put it into a buffer, decode it, um, verify its integrity, verify a GPS lock. We ultimately convert that raw data into a data type here, which we use throughout the rest of our stack, um, which has some pretty self-explanatory um, member variables here, and of acceleration in X, Y, and Z translationally, um, east, north, up, which is a way of measuring your um, height and location and then omega phi kappa, which is our rotations around um, the x, y, and z axes, as, as yes. John mentioned. And then similarly, we convert to a GPS type, which contains time, as we talked about, um, GPS time, the latitude and longitude, and the altitude, also as we mentioned, in a WGS84 ellipsoid reference frame. And then the dilution of precision, which is the geometric relationship between your GPS, the location of the GPS satellites in the sky and where your GPS receiver, or in our case, our GPS antenna is located. Um, and this dilution of precision, if you go and you know read about it, is actually on a larger scale than zero to one, but from the XSense, we're normalizing it on a scale of zero to one. Um, zero being bad and one being the most ideal case of um, precision. And what this basically translates into is how precisely we are confident in the GPS reading that we're, that we're ultimately um, converting in our latitude and longitude location. So that can vary all the way from, you know, very, very low confidence and 300 meters away to, you know, very high confidence and, you know, one meter or, or less accuracy. Um, okay. <clears throat> so after getting IMU and GPS into our stack, this is how we create an aspect from, from IMU and GPS. So here I'm just giving a one ideal example. Uh, supposedly we have a GPS point that was collected at time T0. And, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that in general the IMU 
frequency, the, the frequency of reading IMU samples are a lot higher than the GPS frequency. So between two adjacent uh, GPS points, we usually have multiple IMU samples. So that's why in this example, between two IMU GPS, we have three IMU samples. This is just an example. Doesn't necessarily to be this ratio. So supposedly we have a GPS point uh, at time t0, and we have multiple IMU samples in between. So we can integrate the IMU acceleration to get the speed. And if we integrate again, we can get the displacement relative to the previous point. So if we start from this GPS point, and after using three IMUs, our trajectory from IMU indicates that we arrive here. Hopefully, at time t1, our next GPS point also shows that our current location is here. But in the real world, no sensor is perfect, so there will be some disagreement between IMU and GPS. So let me demonstrate the noise level in both IMU and GPS units. The plot on the left is a uh, plot on the XYZ acceleration we collected from one trip over time. As you can see, the readings is really noisy. Um, I can't hardly tell if there is any bias in this data set, but you can notice there is a constant shift on the Z acceleration. That's because of the gravity. And this is just giving you an idea how noisy the raw IMU acceleration can be. And the plot on the right is a top-down view of a trip we collected in a uh, suburban area where there was a lot of trees, buildings, and some turns. So as you can see, all the GPS points are, are the black points. They are scattering around the aspect trajectory we later processed. Uh, so in general, the GPS can be inaccurate up to 30 meters or even 50 meters, depends on what GPS model you have. Um, the, this aspect, we were, so we got this aspect by using some sensor fusion techniques, like for example, common filter or particle filter. Uh, there are multiple references online where you can, you can definitely find some. So uh, at Simple Maps, we're aware that there might be a lot of noise in the GPS samples. So we just use IMU and GPS to create a, a uh, preliminary aspect to register point cut, but we do not use GPS anymore after this point.